So Aquarius, uh, this is going to be your love relationship reading. Um, right off the bat, I feel like there is very, very low energy and low libido with you guys. It's very, very low. It feels like you're physically and um, I even want to say like it's not so much emotional. It's uh, you're physically and mentally tired. You're physically and mentally tired. And so you just don't, you know, really feel if you're single, for example, you just don't really feel like getting dressed up going out wearing you know high heels or wearing uncomfortable shoes if you're um, not female and you know dancing the night away it's like you're tired you're you'd rather spend your time in seclusion and you'd rather you know stay home and enjoy your space with like a book or you know just to, just doing like home entertainment I feel like you're tired and then I'm also feeling some of you um, you have a relationship partner but you know you've been working a lot so you might not have time for to nurture the relationship or to even, you know, get together often with your significant other. So I also see that coming in, but also that same energy before about interference when it comes to, you know, your love relationship as well. That can be a little bit uh, taxing. Um, so let me talk about this. And I mentioned to the other signs, I'm trying to do the love reading in a little uh, bit of a different style, mainly so that I can capture all the different narratives. So let's talk about this. We have here an earth sign. This is a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn, their sun, moon, or rising. This is the page of pentacles, okay? Um, when I look at this person, I always feel like it's somebody that can be a little bit more on the materialistic end. So that means they care about, you know, money. They care about how much someone makes. They care about appearances. They care about uh, reputation and, and, you know, career and things like that. Um, it doesn't mean they're unethical, but I also feel like it's somebody that talks a lot about money, how much they have, how much they don't have. It's somebody who places a little bit too much emphasis on material things, security things. And um, I'm also feeling as well, their income, their spending always catches up with their income. So that means they can be making, you know, 200,000 a year in whatever unit of currency that you're, you're thinking of. They can be making like 200,000, which is a lot of money and their lifestyle their spending always catches up with them so they're under the, the the premise that you know i'm never making enough money and when you have conversations with them it seems very you know shallow it seems like there isn't any depth to it and it can seem a little bit uh superficial okay and i feel like there is a big sense of misunderstanding between you and this person you might feel like, oh, they're so materially, you know, bound to, they're so materially focused. How can I have a relationship with this person? How can I even have, you know, uh, how can I have more soulful connection with this person? Because there's so much on the surface and I want something a little bit deeper. I want something a little bit more philosophical. So you have to also understand where you're coming from versus where they're coming from. They might have been in a place where, you know, they, they've hit rock bottom financially. And so that's why they're so materially focused. And that's why they're also bringing that into their relationship. Whereas from your end, you're very, very innovative. You're ingenious when it comes to finding alternative ways of making money. You you might also come, um, you know, come... You might have also grown up in an environment where there was a lot of prosperity, a lot of wealth. And you never had to worry about financial resources the way this person does. And so if you're kind of faulting them for these things, you want to be a little bit careful, okay? Not everyone has the skills, you know, the way that you do to kind of like cut ties and start over or, you know, hit bottom and then hit rock bottom financially and then bounce right back. So I do feel that, you know, some people are just innately they're they're like this but i feel like you're with somebody that you feel is a little bit too materialistic for your taste and i also feel like there is very strong attraction as well i'm sensing it's somebody who's very exotic you know usually when this nine of pentacles comes up it's usually somebody who is of darker complexion 
and it's somebody who is um, just you know very very worldly very exotic they dress really well they look really stunning they always look very clean and made up and you know they just dress really well and so it could be some of you are with this person because you like the way that you, the the two of you are seen together you like as well the way that they look or the way that they look when you're with them or the way that other people look at you when you're with them but all together this is um i'm sensing as well it's a relationship that doesn't have a lot of substance and i feel this is somebody that is new emerging in your life this is not somebody that you know you've been dating for a long time i do see a lot of independence between you and this person where they're giving you the space to roam and to do things and you like that but on an innate level there isn't enough emotional investment to really tie the two people together okay so that's an earth sign You have some attraction here in the workplace. People are really digging you. Okay. So this is workplace romance. This is people admiring your skills, admiring your business acumen. And they're also admiring how hard you work, okay? The Three of Pentacles is usually finance related. It's somebody that has a lot of skills that is, you know, in a position where they're telling people, you should do this, you should do that. And I feel this is your energy where they're telling, you're telling people you're able to, I feel like train people or you're able to help people solve problems and you're doing it in a very skilled and methodical manner and as a result of it somebody in your work environment is really admiring you some i feel like um they're trying to keep their distance and they're trying to be very professional but you can look in their faces and sometimes they they look at you and you catch them looking at you well they're interested so we have some um it could potentially blossom into romance, but you're keeping things. You're purposely keeping things very platonic, which is very smart of you. I also feel you're not feeling that person, okay? We have here the Three of Swords, which is basically not really feeling it, not f uh, feeling that flutter in your stomach, not feeling your, your heart beat when the person is around, but I feel like somebody is just admiring you, admiring you but it feels very unrequited from your end, okay? So I do sense this is the month. They're gonna make themselves known. They're gonna say nice things about you. They're gonna also possibly, I wanna say like, um, you know, throw in some nice compliments your way or complimenting you to other people. And it's gonna make you kind of, you're gonna be made aware that they have, you know, romantic intentions for you whether or not you go ahead with it i just don't feel like dabbling in uh, office romance is a smart move so just be careful okay um i just feel like you're going to be stumbling across a lot of admirers at work and and the people that admire you it's not just for the way that you look it's not just for the superficial reasons they admire you because of your skills. So in a way, you know, they admire you as a whole person. But I feel like you're keeping a very stone face. You're keeping, you know, your professional distance, which is something I strongly would advise because I don't feel this is going to be, you know, worth pursuing. OK, we have here three of pentacles, which is, you know, love at work and three of swords disappointment. So when they're all linked together, your best off not to make a move and you know not dilly dallying in that department okay okay so let's talk about this energy Okay, so we have here, let me talk about this one first because it's been showing up many months for you guys. This is a water sign, page of cups. And this is somebody that is, I mentioned, you know, like usually attention seeking, somebody that, that thrives on love and admiration from another person. 
They need it in order to feel good about themselves. They need it to feel safe and secure about where they stand with you. So they need a little bit more affirmation, a little bit more attention. Not that they're emotionally needy. I don't feel that they are like that. But when they love somebody, they love um, with their whole heart. And they, they need that, you know, constant feedback. Okay, so that they're not like led astray. So we have here a water sign. This is a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio. It's showing up in the reverse position. Um, it's linked up here with the sign that I mentioned earlier, the Page of Wands. And the Page of Wands, I feel like in this situation, you have a lot going on in your life. You know, you, you have a lot of plans that you're trying to bring into the fold. You have a lot of people that are you're interacting with. Your world is really starting to open up. And I also feel like you're at a point where being single is really not going to hurt you at all. You actually welcome the, the freedom to come and go as you please. You welcome the chance to be on your own and not have to make decisions de uh, based on another person. Okay, So I feel like some of you are reassessing. If you are in a relationship here with a water sign, or if you are in a relationship here with a fire sign, so Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, and this is Scorpio, um, Pisces, Cancer, in the reverse position, a lot of you are reassessing your bond here with this water sign. You're trying to think, like, practically, is this going to work? And you're trying to think as well, are they as willing to build with me as I am with them? And you're also trying to think like, is this something, is there more to it or is this it? If I nurture it and, and you know, really invest my time, my energy in this relationship, is the other person on board as well? Is the other person going to be as committed? And is the other person going to, you know, are, are they sincere? Is there a feel, are, are their feelings actually real? So I do see a lot of reassessment that's happening here. And I'm also sensing as well, um, there's both of these are pages and pages are very, very young energy. And earlier you had a page of pentacles as well. So if we were to look at this, it's almost like you're purposely dating people who are not ready for relationships. That's what it feels like to me. Mainly because it's lighthearted, it's non-committal, it can be very fun. And I'm also sensing many of you are shifting partners, you know, going on a date Monday with this person, Tuesday with another person, Wednesday with another person. And then you have a lot of admirers in your work environment. So you're trying to just, you know, be single, have your cake and eat it too. And that's fine. But at one point, you know, you're going to be feeling quite empty. So if you are right now dating and you're just going through, you know, the motion, just dating people and trying to figure out what sticks, I do feel this fire sign can be very good. This is Sagittarius, Aries or Leo. If you're just dating, mindlessly dating and you're just like, I wonder what works. This is a good energy. It's a very compatible energy with you. And I also feel this person, they, they're still growing into themselves. And then this earth sign, if you're newly dating... I'm sensing that they might be a little bit too, like the conversation will not be very deep. It's not going to be deep the way that you want. And I don't really see that emotional connection. The water sign, emotional connection for sure. But they might be, they're, they're, they require a lot more maintenance, maintenance and they require more heartfelt conversation that will make you really uncomfortable. So the fire sign looks good for those who are, you know, meeting new people and dating, okay? So let me see what's showing up here as your advice for this month, Aquarius. Okay. So your advice, Aquarius, what I'm feeling here is this. Let's talk about this. 
this is letting go of things that are weighing us down letting go of things that we're clinging on to out of security but it's not really serving it a higher purpose it's not entirely um i want to say long-term building so if you're just dating a lot of people and you're just going through the motions right and you're just like uh, i don't really want to build a relationship but i want to have it all and the people around you are serious about you you're going to end up you know breaking some hearts so it's important for you to you know let people go if you don't have serious intentions and i mentioned this as well um i believe with the capricorn people the energy is it's blurred together and so my advice here as well is if you're dealing with somebody that is you know a lot more emotionally needy than you would like it's not a good combination and then it will inadvertently trigger a lot of jealousies a lot of hostilities and a lot of like oh you don't need me or you don't want me so it can create a lot of friction in the relationship so aim for relationships that are a little bit more harmonious a little bit more light-hearted so that you don't end up you know repeating cycles because i mentioned before when you love you're capable of loving very 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 deeply but I also feel like, you know, everyone's your friend. So you feel like if I were to stop dating this person, I'm not going to be their friends anymore. And that would suck. So then you try to cling on to that relationship and it's not really going to be good. OK, so if you are dabbling with multiple partners, you really want to reassess, you know, which one is viable. If none of them are viable, that's fine. Let them all go so that you can figure out something else. And then I'm also feeling if you're dealing with, you know, somebody with control issues, if you're hanging on to a relationship that doesn't really have a future as well, um, either because of control issues, wanting to make things work, and, you know, kind of like, um, I want to say rationalizing or lying to yourself that this is the one that's also not going to serve its purpose. So, you know, try to release some things, okay, release baggage release excess energy because holding on to it is really going to affect you it's really going to eat up your time it's going to get you all distracted and this is the month where you need to be very strong and you need to try to do the right thing and you need to kind of like channel uh, messages from your higher self in order to do the right thing and the ethical thing and to avoid all of this mindless bickering wasting your energy um arguing with people that don't really have, you know, conversations that lead nowhere, I want to say. So it's a very good idea overall to release baggage, okay? If there are, you know, disputes and, and things like that in relationship, try to approach it from a spirit of understanding as well. I do see bickering coming in between you and a relationship partner. In the general reading, I mentioned that. So it's really important for you to get yourself centered so that you're not wasting your energy with things or conversations that don't really have a resolution all right so i'm gonna leave it at that i wish you the best uh aquarius take care of yourself okay and i'll be back bye bye